Hi guys, it's Paula and I hope you are doing well. This is going to be my empties and low buy update for the month of March. I'm so excited to share with you what I finished and what my low buy bank is looking like. I'm also a little self-conscious. If my nose looks different, it's because I have started wearing glasses. I, um, I've been prescribed glasses since I was in high school and I've never worn them. I never felt like I needed them. But just recently in the last couple weeks, guess what? I finally feel like I need them. I don't know what is going on. I know I'm kind of at that age where <sighs> vision starts to go. I don't know if that's what's going on, but I am now wearing glasses all day long. And um, these are them, these are my glasses. And so I take them off to film so that you guys can still recognize me and so that there's no glare on them. But then I'm like, oh my gosh, do I have little glasses marks on my nose? Because I feel like I do. Anyways, that's what's going on with that. It is so weird to walk around with glasses all day long. And it feels weird, like the back of my right ear is kind of sore. Because I feel like it's digging in back there. I have an appointment in a couple weeks. The kids and I are going to get um, our eyes checked. So, uh, yeah. But all of a sudden, I feel like I need these glasses that I've been carrying around in my purse for like 20 years. And I've never used really even once. It's very strange. All right, let's start with my empties. First of all, we're going to start with a declutter. I'm kind of sad about this in a weird way, but I am decluttering these nail stickers. These are Color Street nail stickers. I can't remember what the name of these stickers were. The packaging they're in says Mardi Gras, but I don't know if this style was actually Mardi, Mardi Gras or not because um, it might have been another shade. Uh, another style of nail stickers anyways I've had friends over the years that sell color street and I like the idea of them I mean what's not to like nail stickers that last on your nails for up to two weeks and then up you know once you apply them you can like go about your day immediately you don't there's no like dry time I like the idea so much I also like that they have these awesome like glitter designs and other designs that you could just like instant nail art. The idea of them is so appealing to me, but for some reason, every time I wear them, all I wanna do is pick them off of my nails immediately. I cannot stand any feeling of like bumpiness or edges. Like the second I feel the edges, I just start picking at it and I'm just like constantly rubbing it. I also have pretty, I don't think I can show you, but I have pretty curved nail beds. My nail beds are not that flat and I think I've been told by nail technicians over the years that it makes my nails harder for like acrylics and manicures and nail stickers. I just think because my nail beds are kind of rounded, it makes it a little bit more difficult. So I buy these and then I never really use them. Anyways, I remembered I had these and I was thinking of my daughter Hazel who has lovely flat nail beds and who loves glitter and I said Hazel I'm gonna give you a color street manicure and she was so excited so I pulled these out well she picked these out and I went to go put her on put them on her and because I had opened them previously probably two three years ago the they've dried out so these used to be really soft like bendy things and now they're like cracking and they've completely dried out. They're useless. So that's a shame. I probably spent like $15 on these things and um, I did not get my money's worth out of them. For sure, I did not get my money's worth out of them, but they are useless and I'm going to throw them away. I did have an unopened package from the same time frame. They were about two years old also, but because they were unopened, they were still fresh. So I was able to give Hazel a cute little color street manicure. They ended up looking adorable and she loves it. Um, and actually I might, I have more um, color street nail strips that I need to check and see if those need to be decluttered or if I could use those on Hazel as well. But I might be in the market to buy some more color street nail strips for her or I might try like there's different off brands now like I see Target has a brand that's doing these nail polish strips and stuff too but I might be trying out some different nail strips for Hazel because they really do last a long time on her nails and um, she thinks it's really fun and cool 
and there's no dry time. Again, it's the dry time because it's really hard to ask a six year old to sit still while you paint their nails and then to sit still for like another 15 minutes after you've finished painting their nails so that it'll dry. I mean, it's just almost impossible, but these definitely work. So anyways, um, that was a very long story to say that these are going in the garbage and I'm decluttering them. All right, on to the empties. I have a couple of body care empties. First of all, I finished a native deodorant. This is my preferred non-aluminum deodorant. This is in the scent candy cane. It came out around the holidays and it smelled pepperminty. And I quite liked it very much. Um, so far I've tried five, six, seven different scents from Native and all of them have worked great except for one. There was one scent that for some reason did not work for me and I powered through it and finished it off, but it was horrible. But every other scent I've tried from Native has been great. And although it does not stop me from sweating, if I get nervous or if I get active or if I walk into a hot room, I will perspire. I don't feel like I stink. So you gotta get used to, you know, feeling wet. If you're used to a, a true antiperspirant that has aluminum in it, it's weird when your body starts sweating because you get very used to it not sweating. So it's, it's weird to feel your body sweat, but once you get used to that feeling, as long as you don't smell, that's really all that matters. So I'm a big fan of this deodorant. I will continue to repurchase it. I'm on to a new native scent. Actually, I'm back to an old native scent that I was using before I started working on this over the winter. So I'm still with native. We're still in a committed relationship. My other body care empty is my lotion. This is the Body Recipes Body Lotion. This was in my 50 Shades of Purple project pan and I really got every last drop out. I think I thinned it out with some water at the end to make sure I could get it all out. That's how I, that's how I do that. But um, yeah, this was gifted to me. It's probably came from like a dollar store or a discount store. I don't think this is some fancy lotion, but it smelled really good and it worked fine. It's more of a summertime lotion than a wintertime lotion, but it worked fine. And it had a really nice smell, so. I enjoyed it, but I have way too many lotions and I'm so happy to have this out of my stash. Okay, next I have a couple of little perfume empties. First of all, I have this hair perfume from the brand Gisu, Gisu. I'm not sure how you pronounce that, but it is called a honey infused hair perfume and boy was this delicious. It smelled like a candy store. Mm-hmm. It was very nummy. I liked it a lot. I'm probably not going to purchase a full size of this. I don't see that happening. I believe the sample came from Sephora. So if you're interested in a delicious hair perfume, I would highly recommend you check this out at the Sephora, at a Sephora store and give it a sniff. But I don't see myself purchasing this in the full size, but I really enjoyed the sample. I also finished another product from my 50 Shades of Purple. This is the Healing Garden Lavender Therapy Body Mist. Um, this has probably been in my collection for 15 years, maybe 20. Uh, the Healing Garden is a brand that was sold at Kohl's. I don't know if it still is, but it used to be always sold at Kohl's. And I worked at Kohl's for like five years in college. And that's probably when I snagged this up. So that ought to tell you something. I did not like the scent. I'm not a big fan of lavender. I'm really glad it's gone. Just that smell alone was enough to remind me how glad I am that it's gone. I do not need a lavender scented perfume in my life and I'm so happy to have this out. Okay, next I have a few face care products. First of all, I finished a serum. This is the Dermalogica Smart Response Serum. I received this complimentary from Octoly, I believe. Yeah, I believe this was Octoly. I've gotten so many great serums to review through Octoly over the last couple of years, and this was one of them. This is recommended for both day and night use, and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really good moisturizer or serum. Um, what surprised me is that I felt like I got through this bottle really fast. I felt, I felt like this went a little too fast. That is my only complaint about this product. It's a pricey product. I think it's somewhere in the $70 range, $70 to $80 range. And for that kind of dough, I would like it to last more than a few months, but I really enjoyed it. 
I also finished two samples of moisturizers. First of all, this is the Pharmacy Daily Greens moisturizer, and this is the Drunk Elephant Proteiny Polypeptide Cream. Both of these were in my advent calendar project pan. Both of these were very good and I enjoyed them very much. I'm not in the market for another moisturizer at this moment. I have a few I need to get through first, but I did enjoy both of these and I would consider purchasing both of them, but more likely the pharmacy one over the Drunk Elephant one just because I like that smell. It was like a lemon lime kind of smell and I really enjoyed it. The Pharmacy One is a gel moisturizer, and usually I stay away from gel-based moisturizers, but this one felt like it had some moisturizing to it. It didn't feel like so lightweight that I couldn't even feel it. It felt like it was doing something. Okay, on to makeup. I have a sample of foundation from number seven. There's two little samples. This was also in my advent calendar project pan, and I finished them both off. Um, not in the market for a foundation, so glad to have that gone. I also finished my NYX The Brow Glue. I bought this last year um, when I needed a brow glue and it was clear. It looks brown now because I apply it on top of brown eyeshadow, but this was a clear brow gel and this is the wand. It's got one of those cute little tiny wands. I do prefer these wands, but I'm back to the ABH Brow Gel, which is a much bigger wand. I would prefer the ABH Brow Gel to have a wand like this. But anyways, I'm back to the ABH Brow Gel. I just, I do think it is the best brow gel out there. It is so good. And I will not pay for it for, I will not pay full price for it, but I would consider buying it when it's on sale and I caught it on sale. So that's what I'm back to using. This was good, but I don't think it's as good as the brow gel. I, when I put an Instagram post about this up a while ago, some people definitely loved it and thought it was great. And it's very inexpensive. It's much cheaper. I think if I was comparing this to the ColourPop, what's it called? The Brow Boss brow gel. I think it's something like that. If I had this one and the color pop in front of me, I think I would choose the color pop over this. But I know a lot of people really like this. So very cheap, very, very inexpensive. If you want to try a new brow gel, try it out and let me know what you think. My next product is another declutter. That is my Mary Kay eye pencil in, or eyeliner in the shade Violet. This was another product from my 50 Shades of Purple project pan. And it dried out. Now... Here's the thing, I am decluttering it, but when I mentioned in my video that I had decided to declutter this, a friend of mine, Nikel, mentioned that the In Inglot Duraline will revive this, and I had to try it, and sure enough, it worked. It totally revived this thing, um, and I have used it several times since then, but when I was originally trying to swatch this for you guys in that update, I was actually scraping this on my hand so hard and I couldn't get any product up. And now with a little drop of Duraline, yeah, it's it really revived it. So if you are looking for a way to revive dried out eyeliners, Duraline will do it, man. But um, I am still going to declutter it. It's almost gone and I'm just gonna let it go. But I I thought that was a great tip. I I. I was amazed that Duraline could revive a dried up old eyeliner that was scraping the skin off of my eyes. And like, I can't even get it off now. It is like stuck on there. Maybe this product always had that kind of stay power, but I kind of feel like the Duraline made it even more powerful. I don't know, but I'm gonna let that go. My next empty is this blush. I finished this L'Oreal Translucide Luminous Gel Blush. This is that old, old blush. I put it in Project 10 Uses a couple months ago. I've never had so many comments in a video begging me to throw a product away. Like, seriously, I've never had that before. Like, I think most of you guys kind of know me but by now. You guys know I'm just gonna like use some old crap that nobody else would use and I'll be okay. I think you guys have just come to accept that. But seriously, when I started talking about this blush, everybody was like, please, for the love of God, throw it away, throw it away. And I'm like, <laughs> um, so I stopped using it on my face after I got my 10 uses in. 
one, because you guys were freaking out and I was worried that I was gonna give somebody a heart attack, but also two, it just didn't have much of an impact on my face. It really didn't do anything anymore. Like it was so old, it had lost whatever impact it had as far as providing color to my skin. It just literally didn't do anything. And yet, I couldn't just throw it away. I like, I needed this as an empty. So I took a tip from Jessica Lee, who left a comment in my video saying, mix it in with your moisturizer and put it on your body. And I thought, you know what? If I want that empty so bad, I might as well just do that. Normally, I don't do that. Normally, I just, if it's, if it's a product that just can't work for me, it's not that serious. Like, I could just throw it away. But there is something about this that I couldn't let it go. Like, I needed this in my empties. So I mixed it in with my moisturizer and I put it all over my body and it did absolutely nothing and I finished it off. But for some reason, I needed to keep this empty with me for this year. Like I needed this to be in my yearly empties. Either way, it would have counted as a point to my low buy bank, but if it's, an, if it's a declutter, it just goes straight in the garbage. And if it's an empty, I keep it for my yearly empties and I needed this for my yearly empties this year. So I found a way to finish it off and use it up, even though I normally don't do that. So it's an empty, look at that. And my final empty is a total spoiler for an upcoming project update. So this is a sneak peek, you guys, but I finished my Makeup Forever Micro Finish Powder. This is in my Let's Get Loose project pan. And it is all gone. I managed to use it all up. I, I had no idea that I was gonna finish this this month. But once I pulled the stopper out, I saw that there was really not much product left and I just used it every single day and it is gone. So I will be rolling this out of that project at, in my update in a couple days and I'll have to find something to roll in its place. I haven't figured out what yet. But yes, this is my first empty for Let's Get Loose and it is another loose setting powder out of my stash even though it's just a deluxe size. I'm counting it. I probably received this either as a free gift from Sephora or from an Ipsy bag years and years ago but I'm really happy to finish this. This is not something I would consider pur purchasing a full size of. It didn't do that much for me. And um, there are different powder, there are other powders that I would much prefer to use over this one. So I'm just glad to have it out of my stash. Okay, it is time to move on to my low buy update. As of last month, I had a negative balance of 92 points in my low buy bank. Pathetic. Based on all the empties I just mentioned, I am going to give myself five points towards my low buy at bank. Point for this, a point for this, a point for this, a point for this, and a point for this. So five points. Normally I would give myself points for both of these, but both of these came into my life last year and I did not count them against my low buy bank, so I'm not counting them towards my low buy bank today. So those don't give me any points. But I am giving myself five points towards my low buy bank, which brings me down to negative 87 points towards my low buy bank. We are in the 80s now, we're getting there. The question is, did anything new come into my life during this month? And the answer, surprisingly, is I don't think so. I cannot think of anything that came into my life during the past month. I will say that this, I will say that this month flew by and I don't, I could be missing something, but I cannot think of anything new that has come into my life over the past month that would count against my low buy bank. Nope, can't think of anything. So we are staying at a balance of negative 87. It's not great, but it's good. I will say that I've been tempted a lot this past month with per the, the feeling of purchasing. Um, lots, of, lots of temptations have been coming at me every which way. Um, so far, I just keep the blinders on and try to keep moving forward. But I would say that if you're wondering what the biggest temptation has been, it has been the re-release of the Gemini palette from Melt Cosmetics. That is definitely one of those palettes that have gotten away from me. Um, I've been keeping track of a list of palettes that have gotten away from me, and I think I might do a top 10 video soon, but Gemini is definitely on that list. 
and I thought it was gone for good. And then they decided they're gonna re-release the Gemini palette. They have new out new packaging, but it's the same palette, along with the Gemini 2, which is equally as stunning and very different. And of course, if I'm gonna buy those two, I might as well get the Smoke Sessions palette, which I never got. And before you know it, I've spent $130 on eyeshadow palettes and I've killed my low buy bank. So I'm trying to put that out of my mind, but um, there's something that makes me very happy to know that it's still out there and that maybe one day I could own the Gemini palette, but I have to get this low buy bank under control and I need to get points into my low buy bank so that I could actually purchase things the right way, the way I, the way my rules were set up. So um, hopefully that palette, hopefully that palette sticks around for a little while, and hopefully they got whatever formulation issues worked out so that it's just a good palette with good quality shadows. Because yeah, I would love to get that palette, but I'm so long, I'm so far away from it. <sighs> so many other palettes have been tempting me too, but that's the one that really stands out. And other things have been tempting me as well, but yeah, I'm easily tempted. I'm, I'm trying though. I'm trying to just keep going one day at a time, you know, like they say in AA or whatever, just take it one day at a time. I'm trying. So I think that's everything for my empties and low buy update video for this month. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it and I will see you in the next one. Bye.